There once was a crochet airframe named Tucket. Oh, family friendly. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be making bucket hats. So we're gonna bucket. <laughs> Let's begin right next. Hi, I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Welcome and let's do a bucket hat together. The title of this video is the size that we're gonna be working with today. This particular pattern has several sizes including all the way from zero to six months to an adult size. You'll find a link in the more information of this video in order to find the free patterns for that. And this is designed by Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. You can see that she has extensions that you can add to it whether it's eyes or crab claws, uh, claws or maybe even a whale. That's something that you can decide for yourself but today I'm only focusing on the basics of these hats. So I'm going to recommend a couple things. She has Super Saver as Red Heart Super Saver as her suggestion. If you are uh, knowing anything about heat, cotton is your best way to go. So Lily Sugar and Cream is the better way to go. It's 100% cotton. Cotton keeps you warm but it also keeps you cool. So this is what you would be looking at. So if you're finding acrylic in the Super Saver too hot to wear, switch over to your um, Lily Sugar and Cream. You can do Bernat Handicrafter or maybe even Peaches and Cream. We're going to be using a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's begin the size that's promised in the video title. Let's begin. I have a fly bothering me here in the studio and the window for the studio is open so it is raining out so you may hear a little bit of water dripping today. So we're going to begin with uh, the teen and the adult size. There is a difference of just one set of instruction which I will cover when we get there and uh, it will be relatively easy. So I will tell you where that split off is. You can read that in the instruction as well. So we're gonna create a magic ring. It's also called an adjustable circle so just put it in your hands and use two fingers and we have slower videos available just on techniques if you need that here on YouTube and you're gonna wrap it over your hand and create an X just like that and I'll demonstrate that one more time. Okay, so put it in the front of your hand, two fingers and if you know another way then you can do it your own way and then you cross over and use your third finger to hold the X formation. You're going to scoop underneath the first strand here and grab this one and then you can slide your fingers out and chain one and that'll lock it. And so when you crochet you have to crochet over top of these two strands to keep the ring consistent. So let's begin and so I will tell you when it's a split off for the teen or in the adult size but most of the pattern is for both. So let's just start. We're going to double crochet 11 times into the center of this magic ring. So we have one, two, Three, the color is called tangerine by the way. Three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. And before you continue let's verify that there's 11. And so let's count back and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Just pull this slightly taut. Don't all the way and I want you to join it to the top of the first one. The 11 back is the first one. So if you're not sure just count it back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 is right there. Now even as an experienced crochet I will always count back because the counts matter. So do a slip stitch and pull a large loop. So now let's turn it upside down and grab the straggler here and I want to pull that tight. We need to use a tapestry needle to secure that into position. If you don't and you cut that it's gonna fall out. That's a guarantee. So in the direction that from which you just came just go back and when you put your needle in if you turn it around you should never see it. So you don't go deep that deep that you go right through the whole fabric itself and pull through and then go in the opposite direction. It's best if you can split those fibers apart instead of just wiggling in between strands and then finally a third time is a charm. And once you you're confirmed and you're happy with that. I want you then just to cut that 
and round number one is complete. And put this back onto the hook and let's start round number two. Round number two, you're going to chain two and you'll notice in Sarah's instructions that she puts chain two at the end of instructions. I always put it at the beginning so that's how I teach. So we're gonna chain two, that's not gonna count as anything and we're going to put in two double crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. I'm going to show you a cheating technique if the seam line really bothers you on hats. I can show you how we can cheat at the system. It's not in the pattern, it's just my experience to be able to show you. So you got two in the first one, two into the next and do two into each. There's 11 double crochets around so there will be 11 sets of two by the time you get all the way around but I will show you how to cheat the system when we get back around. I'll see you back here in a second. When you come all the way around we technically have one stitch left but it appears to always be two. New crocheters assume that this one always is a stitch and so that's how we go off on the counts. So what I'm going to show you is I'm gonna show you the way that it's written. So you're gonna put in two double crochets into the last stitch and then join with the slip stitch to the top of the beginning double crochet. Here's what happens when you go to do that. You can't really see it too much on this sample but sometimes this gapping space is really really noticeable. So how I avoid that is that when I go to do the last stitches in I'm gonna put in the last one here and then we technically have to do one more but watch what I do. I'm gonna do a two together double crochet which will include this stitch and this gap space and the leg of this one that I'll put in will cause it to be a solid uh, marker here so that it will not show through. So wrap the hook and going into the stitch you need to go into, pull through two and then wrap the hook and go into this space. It's not a stitch, it's just a space and then pull through two. Once you pull through all three loops it's a two together double crochet so it's still only one stitch but that you have an extra leg here and when you go to join it to the beginning double crochet with a slip stitch it fills in and there's no gapping spaces at all. You can use this any time that you have anything related to stuff like this. So let's begin round number three. In round number three we're going to chain two doesn't count as anything and we'll place in two double crochets into the same stitch that you did the join. The next stitch is by itself. So double crochet in the next stitch. So here's your sequence to go all the way around. The next one will have two into the same stitch. They'll share the sa stitch and then the next one is one double crochet by itself and I need you to continually repeat that over and over until you come out back around and I'll meet you at the end of the round number three. At the end of number three you can just double crochet into the final but what I'm going to do because that's the count right it's two, one, two, one. So you end up with one by itself but I do my little trick and I put that one plus the space together to finish it to fill in that space and then I join it to the first double crochet. So I'm not going to be talking about that any further in this tutorial but that's what I'll be doing whenever I come back to do the join so that it makes it nice and solid. Let's move on to round number four. In round number four we're going to chain two and we're gonna keep their sequence going so it's going to be two double crochets into the first stitch and then we have uh, two double crochets by itself. So if you ever get a knot in a ball like this I'm going to show you how to deal with that. So I'm gonna just deal with that because that's a natural thing to happen. You know yarn production there's never just a solid strand it always has industrial balls. So I'm gonna create a slip knot with the new one I cut the knot out. Do you see me panicking? I'm not. So just yarn over and going in and pull through and then put the new knot here on and finish the stitch with the new yarn. So there's two into the first one and then the next two are by themselves. So just put the yarn over top and get it stuck underneath the stitches and just go an inch or so and then use your tapestry needle to hide in any loose ends that you have. So there's two by itself. So let's go through the sequence. So there's going to be two into the same stitch and then two by itself. And then you do to repeat that all the way around for round number four. I'm coming to the end of number four and just two by itself that leads you to the end but I'm doing my little trick as I mentioned to fill in that last stitch so the space is gone. 
Let's move on to round number five next. Over the next several rounds including the teen size and the adult size and when we get closer to the end of this next sequence uh, not this uh, round but what's gonna happen is that there will be one set of instructions that will continue on to the adult size and the teen will end earlier. So we're going to begin and we're going to chain two and we're gonna put two double crochet into the first stitch. Now we're gonna grow this out nice and slowly so it matches the head. So over the next ten stitches there will be one double crochet by itself. So we're gonna count those out together. So we're gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the sequence then for this is going to be um, two double crochets into the next and then ten by itself and you're gonna continue to repeat that concept going around and that will take you around number five and I'll re be right back in a moment. Coming up onto the end of number five the this is the tenth one that will take you to the end and I'm just gonna do my little trick and conclude number five. Okay let's talk number six. So here are my instructions. I don't need to demonstrate it so much because it's gonna be what you already know but I will share a tip with you. You're going to chain two and you'll put in two double crochet into the first one. Now last time we were doing ten stitches before doing two into the same stitch. This time it's number eleven but listen to my tip. Do you see the two that belong into the same stitch? If you can see that the first stitch is the one that always will get the two. And this will happen row after row after row after when we're doing this. So you can count your 11 stitches and you'll end up on this one here as your next one that you'll put two into the same stitch. Or you can just crochet and look for that and then just make sure that you put two double crochet into that one. So this one is going to be two uh, double crochets and then 11 and then two and then 11 and you'll do that all the way around for round number six. And I'll leave that in your hands. Now that you've already done round number five you won't have to excessively count if you wanna just follow the, what you can see on the, on the project itself. Okay coming around on number six and the eleventh one is where you'll end up and I'm doing my little trick and join. Let's go on to number seven. Number seven we're gonna grow again so just chain up two and put two double crochet into the same one. So now you got your two in there you're going to just do twelve double crochets in a row and then the twelfth after you get the twelfth one the next one is right here. Do you see how they're sharing the same stitch? It's the first one of the two. So you can count it out or just look for that and make sure that you keep putting two uh, double crochets whenever you see the first one of the grouping of two. So do that and this is round number seven. Coming up around number seven the last one is the twelfth one. And I'm doing my little trick and etc. Let's move on to round number eight. Okay, round number eight chain two and put two double crochets into the same one and this time there will be thirteen in a row and then you'll put two into the next one and again it is the first one of the two that you put that two into. Please do that all the way around. This is round number eight. Finishing round number eight and this one was the thirteenth one that is being joined and let's talk round number nine. Let's talk number nine. We're going to chain two and it will count as nothing and it will be two double crochets into the same one and in round number nine there will be fourteen double crochets by itself and then two into the next and again it's the first one of the two. The round number nine here is the last time you'll do the growth for the teen size. So for teen and adult you're doing both and I will meet you at the end of this round in just a moment. This is round number nine. Okay let's uh, begin and we're finishing the ninth round. Okay so my cat's in the background trying to get through the door. So um, what we have here is that we're going to join. Now listen to my instructions. If you were doing the teen size you were done the growth. Listen to the instructions. You have four rounds now of just chain two and one double crochet in each stitch and so I need you to do that in the video titles uh, in the chapters itself I'm gonna say brim number one and that will pick you up and that's where I want you to meet me. So if you wanna do your four rounds of double crochet um, to get you to where you need to go you're gonna pick me up in the video chapters where it says uh, brim round one. 
Now for those doing the adult size we have to do one more round of growth before we continue on and I'm going to continue along with the adults now. Now for the adult size only and you're going to chain two and you'll put two double crochet into the same stitch and then there will be 15 double crochets in a row and it's the first one of the grouping of two that will have the two into it just in case you want, don't wanna count. So please do 15 double crochets and then two into the next and so on and get yourself around on round number 10. So I'm just continuing around. This is the final uh, growth of, and this is uh, round number 10 for adult size only. Now at the end of this we have to then do the next few rounds. Uh, when it rains the cats really wanna go outside but then they change their minds. The dog doesn't mind the rain so much but you know the cats, princesses. Let's begin the next three rounds for adult size and it's just one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. For our teenage size that we, I've already given those instructions. Those were four rounds of doing it for the teenage size but for the adult size there's only three rounds of one double crochet and let's just cover that quickly. So rounds number 11, 12 and 13, three rounds and you are just going to chain up two and apply one double crochet in each of the stitches going around. You don't need to count, just slam it in and do those three rounds and I'll pick you back up and we're gonna officially start the brim for all sizes when we come back in just a few moments. And for the um, uh, both sizes it's going to be round number 14 which is the brim size and I'll be right back in a few moments. So I just completed my three rounds of just double crochet. For those that are in the teenage size this will be the, your fourth round of just straight double crochets. So now we're gonna continue with the brim which is round number 14 for both sizes. So welcome teenage size and adult. We are going to do the brim. This is round number 14 for both sizes. You're going to chain two and apply two double crochet into the first stitch. Now you're going to double crochet into the next stitch all by itself. So the sequence for this entire round is going to be two double crochet into the next and then one into the one after that and I need you to do that sequence all the way around, round number 14. So the last stitch is one by itself and that's just because you're keeping in the, the sequence. Now we're going to do the next few rounds and they're different for both sizes. So let's talk about the teen and adult size. For the teenage size it's rounds number 15, 16 and 17 are just one double crochet in each. For the adult size it's rounds number 15, 16, 17 and 18. If you feel the brim is too big for you, you can stop at any point because the last round that we'll do together it, it doesn't matter on the count. So to begin the final few rounds uh, whatever size you're working on. So it's three uh, rounds for the teenage, four rounds for the adult. Just chain up two and apply one double crochet in each stitch around and do the number of rounds that you prefer. And I'll be right back to show you the final round to finish your hat today. So I'm back for the final round. I just tried this on. I'm stopping after two rounds of doing after the, the brim section. So I tried it on. That's as long as I want it to go on top of my face. So I'm going to demonstrate here the last round. It's a reverse single crochet also called the crab stitch. Some people absolutely hate this stitch. If you don't like it that much just chain up one and apply one single crochet in the stitches going around. For those that would like to follow as per the pattern just chain up one and one single crochet in the first one and instead of advancing forward you're going to go to the stitch behind. Okay and then just scoop the yarn and after about three stitches you're going to see why the stitch has been applied. So one, two and three and you can see the look that will change it to the edge. So just go around reverse single crochet if you wish to do that or single crochet depending on your mood swing today <laughs> and I will be back at the end to finalize this pattern off with you on camera. So I've come all the way back around. I'm just going to slip stitch to the first um, reverse single crochet or the crab stitch and I'm gonna trim. I'm just gonna yarn over and pull through and then turn the hat around. So pull tight and then just turn it around and do the brim. Now you wanna do the inside of the brim when you go to do this grab that tapestry needle that you know you love <laughs> and just drag that yarn through the stitch work. The more plies that you can split apart the better versus going in between strands. So go through once and just make sure you try to split some plies 
people love to complain that stuff comes out and that's a better way to do it but it's not obviously nothing's ever foolproof. And you're just gonna go back and forth and then that's the end of your story today. So you've just completed either the teen size or the adult size. It was pretty close in sizing with each other and really neat. Um, we were able to hide in the the slip stitching that you saw because of my little technique I showed you and overall it's a great little hat and enjoy your summer with your bucket hat and I'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.